Hello and welcome. I have this Toshiba Porter J3490CT and today I am going to be performing the routine I did a little over 10 years ago to install Windows XP onto it. After much sweat and agony, I figured out how to boot from the CD and install Windows XP. And this is what I discovered back then. First, I need a modern PC. It needs a CD burner and a USB drive. 10 years ago, I installed Windows directly onto the hard drive. This time, I'm going to swap it out for a mSATA SSD. I need a 2.5 inch IDE converter to connect it to the laptop. I'll link it to the description below. Next, I need a blank CD for burning the boot disk too. For software, I'll need MS-DOS 6.22, which I got from WinWorld. I could not get Windows XP from there though. The boot disk is in a program called Precom Boot Disk Creator, which I found on the internet 10 years ago. I run it and extract the image file. The image file is in an IMZ format, which is still compressed. I need to use 7-zip to extract that. Once that's extracted, I end up with the IMA file. I mount that with in disk. Now I have the boot floppy, I can see what's in there. It's missing edits, so I need to get that from MS-DOS 6.22 by mounting disk 1, again using in disk. I mount it on another drive so I can access both floppies. Edit has a dependency on QBasics, so I copy both over onto the mounted boot disk. I didn't know what other dependencies were out there, so I copied as much of disk 1 as I could before running out of space. You can see the files I copied, which worked for me. Now I right click the boot disk and select save disk contents as image file, to save an image of my boot disk. This is a necessary step in order to make a boot CD from floppy. I don't write a MBR as the floppy image already has one. Now I'm ready to burn the bootable floppy onto CD. I open image burn and select mode build. Then in the tabs on the right, I select advanced bootable disk. Be sure to check the make image bootable checkbox and to set the emulation type to floppy disk 1.44 megabyte. I also download all the drivers for this laptop from Toshiba's support website and load it onto a USB drive. Now I open up the laptop to replace the hard drive with the SSD. I also remove the RAM because sometimes it has issues with installing Windows. Now comes the star of the show. This is the PCMCIA CD drive that I bought from eBay 10 years ago. I put the boot CD in and select boot from CD drive. Make sure to use the right CD. At the boot screen, I press Shift F5 to get to the command prompt. Then I run Fdisk in order to create partitions on the blank SSD. I make sure to mark the partition as active. Before I can format the partition, I need to restart the computer. I hold F2 for the boot menu, select C for CD drive, and then Shift F5 to get to the command prompt. I run format C colon slash S so that the partition is bootable to DOS. I restart the computer once again and copy all the files over from the boot disk onto the C partition. Then I replace the boot disk with the Windows XP CD. I need to edit cconfig.sys in order to change the menu timeout from 30 seconds to 0. Now I restart the computer, but this time I boot from the hard drive. 
It took a few tries, but I was able to access the Windows XP CD from Drive Z. The setup executable at the root of the CD doesn't work in DOS, so I have to go into i386 and run WinNT from there. And now we're in. 10 years ago, when I saw the screen, I was so happy. I install Windows XP onto the partition that I just created. I ran into issues when activating Windows XP, but I resolved it later, which I'll show. Luckily, you can continue with the setup process without activating Windows. As the laptop came pre-installed with Windows, the product key is an OEM one, so I needed to change a registry key. Now I open the Activate Windows program and put in my product key. As I needed to call Microsoft for activation, I held off while I installed the unofficial Service Pack 4 and all the drivers. I made sure to install the Toshiba common modules first, as some of the other drivers rely on that as a dependency. As the service pack installation took its sweet time, I decided to go ahead and start installing the other drivers. This is not a recommended approach. After calling Microsoft and providing them with the key, they provided me with a separate key and that was all I needed to activate Windows. Now that I finished with installing Windows, I reassembled the laptop. I even put the RAM back in to see if it'll work, which it did. I'd say for a laptop with no built-in optical drive, this is a pretty bare-bones snazzy way to install Windows. Thanks for watching.